name a few like memorable guests that season. Dan Bolzerian, Ed Sheeran, <laughs> um, Lewis Capaldi. You know, a tiny cup like this, like a single, yeah, forty two dollars. Did any Real girls cup. ever get like turned away because they're like, nah, you're not? I'll be honest, bro. Like, it is insane. Like. The fat shaming in Miami, bro, is Is bad. it? Is it's it? really bad. All police behind with guns drawn like this, a machine gun, yeah? Like, drawn, like, facing us. And then another guy filming it. Um, don't buy drugs for the looky looking man. <laughs> <laughs>
parties, <laughs> the clubs. I was just like, what? Is This isn't real life. I've got a picture on my Instagram that says, I'm certain this week didn't just happen. Because yeah. it just doesn't feel I mean, like... I'm still convinced it's not a real Oh, place. mate, yeah. it's mate. Are you moving then? Are you going there next week? Is that yeah, right? Saturday, yeah. Six Saturday, right, today. okay. Yeah. And then how long are you there for? The whole of the um, rest of the summer? Yeah, 13 weeks I've got the apartment for. Um, wow. Hopefully, maybe a couple of weeks longer. I usually stay till sort of mid-October time when mm. everything's died down, yeah. everyone, everything's closed. Mainly because I get such bad FOMO. If I come home early and then yeah. I'm seeing everyone at closing Seeing parties, all Instagrams and that, and you don't want to see I'm sat in bed it. at home listening to it rain outside, it? Yeah. I'm, I'm pissed off. Well, we yeah. went to the closing parties, didn't yeah. we? we yeah. I, think, I think that was a good time to go for my first time because everything was still kicking off. Mm. Like, we were still really busy, yeah. but it wasn't like the height of summer where everything, it, like it's like heaving, like mad heaving. Because I can yeah. imagine like July time, it's absolutely really mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm very hot as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, I might be brown, but I can't handle oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> you you might look at me, straight <laughs> me <and> ginger <laughs> over here. You see the contrast here. Like, absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. When did you go for the first time then? How old were you? Um, so first time I went on holiday to Ibiza, I was 21. Um, right. I was already working in Malia. Mm. Um, so my, obviously the season in Malia starts a bit later than the Ibiza season. Right. So, I went for the opening parties. Um, as I said, I was 21 years old, so that'd have been six years ago now. Um, mm. And then I went and did my season in Malia, and I think it was just a big error going to a yeah. for that holiday and just seeing that other world because That's I was it. kind of going to Malia, which is obviously great when you're at a younger age, but mm. you know, a lot of kids there, do you know what I mean? Mm. Even at yeah. 21, I was getting pretty old for it and mm. being exposed to this whole new world was mad. Yeah. But, but yeah, 21 years old, then um, went on to, to start living there. Yeah. Before we jump into talking about all this, because I cannot wait to hear about this. I went to Mali on my first lads all day, so I can't wait to yeah, reminisce. coming already. I can't <laughs> wait to reminisce about that as well. We've got a pot here. Uh, at the start of every episode, with every guest, we do a thing called a pot look question. A load of questions in there, completely random. Fellow, if you want to grab one, grab the yeah, pot, take one out. Could be absolutely it. anything. We don't write the questions. We get one of our mates too, so we don't know either. Oh, you don't um, know. It could no, be anything. No, no, no. So it could literally be absolute My dribble. Too, too yeah. <laughs> no, no, you read out. You read out. Yeah, yeah. So it could be. I only get them uh, jokes from a cracker, innit? Christmas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably as bad you, as yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing the lad that wrote it for us. So, if you had your own podcast, who would you interview and why? Ooh, well, Rolls of first, yeah, yeah, nice one. Yeah. Um, it has to be Andrew Tate, wouldn't it? Yeah, it has to. Yeah. Be. Um, there's a lot of people you could get on, I think, but I, I just think with. I'm so I've got a very short attention span. I love watching podcasts, um, but you know I can never like sit through a film or mm. watch it whatever else. So mm. I've got a short attention span. I, I need like a lot of stimulation to keep myself interested mm. in anything. Could be a woman, could be anything, yeah. Um, but with Andrew Tate, I can sit and listen to him hours yeah. and hours and hours and hours and end. You know, yeah. might not agree with a hundred percent of things I agree with, but ninety five percent of them are, mm. are, are bang on. And um, he's someone I like to. You know, if I'm doing a podcast, I like to also learn a bit from that person, do you know what I mean? Mm. So when I'm asking questions, I'm trying to get to know them as a character, stuff that maybe the viewers want to see, but I also want to learn a bit myself and ask mm. the questions about stuff that, you know, a bit Definitely, oblivious. Yeah. Of course. So you want to, you, to be it's always great. good to speak to, what we found doing this as well is, the amount of people that we've met that we've learned from is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Like, even if it's just like a tiny little lesson, mm. but it's like better in 1% every single day. And funny you say Andrew Tate, mate, because, that was my dream guest. I think yeah. on one of the first episodes that we did, we said, what would your dream guest be? And I think I said Andrew Tate. Yeah, it'd be unbelievable. Um, it's so like informative, articulate, like it, everything. It's it? the like, way, that when you just said there about short attention span, I think TikTok has meant that's yeah. even more heightened now. So, so many people can't watch something more than like five minutes long. Mm. But the way he articulates himself is so impressive. Yeah. Like he can just speak for so long and without saying an err or a stutter. So yeah. Yeah. Anything like that. that. I think it's the only person I've ever seen ever, 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 any present or anything mm. that can literally speak for hours straight, never says, um, never stutters. Yeah. It, and not just that, but the stuff he's saying is said, per, almost like if, if you said, uh, someone said to you, right, you've got half an hour to go away and write mm -hmm. this in the best way you could possibly write. Yeah. It comes across in the most direct and professional mm -hmm. way, should we say. Mm. And it'll just come out of his mouth. Yeah. Like that. He'll sit there for like four hours, won't he? It's, it's like yeah. an it's a mental. English exam, what he's speaking alien. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And, mm. and like you say, <laughs> what we found as all do this is, there's a lot of drivel that we speak. Oh, yeah. Everything he says, he's absolutely bang on the yeah. money. And I watched, yeah, yeah. Um, did you, I don't know if you watched the one that he released, the most recent one with Tristan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What was it? It was an emergency meeting, wasn't it, yeah. or something, yeah. on Rumble. Um, and one of the quotes from it was him saying how he's got so good at speaking, being so sort of articulating it really well. And he was just like, I used to just stand in my room in a mirror and just talk to myself. Yeah. And obviously now that's paid dividends. Because like you say, it's 
phenomenal. Well, he goes a bit under the radar, I think, Tristan, because he's, he's very similar, like, isn't he? Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. just talk for hours and hours and but it's, uh, it's again, mental. Again, I saw a thing on the same, I don't know if it was the same one, it might have been on another podcast where Tristan's saying, everybody's saying about how famous Andrew is and how mm. amazing Andrew is and everything like that. But Tristan was like, I've still got two million followers. He was like, if my brother became a millionaire and I had to sit, settle with what I've got, which obviously is like 100 million anyway, so he's not doing yeah. bad for himself. He was like, I'd be like buzzing for my brother. I wouldn't care about that. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, and, and you're right, he does go under the radar a little bit. because I, I think, he, again, he's well impressive. And Bre you know Brendan, don't you? The guy who... Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Yeah. So our friend yeah. Brendan, who's going to come on the podcast and he saw you to come on the podcast as well. Shout out, Brendan. Top boy. We've got Brendan. Um, he he's spoke to Tristan before in the past, and he? Mm. he said how he's just like such a sound guy to yeah. speak to. And he was showing like messages, what yeah, with Tristan. Was, yeah. I was like, what? We, we, we were, our, our heads were blown as well. Yeah, Dude, it's mad, isn't it? Oh, but we, yeah, we yeah. Were We've got it. a mutual connection yeah. to the tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a rule <laughs> that, <related. isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a rule where it's always like you're seven people away from someone. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. Cool. yeah. So we're two away from the. The table. Yeah. We're two away from Tristan and three away from Andrew. Yeah. So I'm yeah. buzzing with Isn't that. That's, yeah. I think maybe, that's probably maybe four podcasts away. From exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> imagine that's what we said. That'd be like you say the the dream guest. Um. So yeah, let's go back to to you, Matt. Obviously, we want to touch on where it all started. Yeah. Um. Obviously, getting into promoting yourself. You you mentioned that you went to Malia. Was that the first sort of place that you went to? I guess you realised first lads holiday with the boys. Was that how it sort of became? What sort of like so what I do now with yeah. the working night? Like yeah. So the promoting and things, um, and then also being like at an event and. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. It came from just really from a young age. So uh, maybe from sort of 17, 18, I loved partying. Mm -hmm. I was always that guy that just went out all the time. Like, you know, you have a mate that goes out a lot. I was that mate on steroids. Do you know what I mean? Like I was partying <laughs> all the time. I just loved going out. I loved socializing. I loved meeting new people, chatting to girls, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I really enjoyed it. And um, when I was 19, I went to uni, moved to Liverpool. And um, that was like just a whole different ball game. because I was in a new city. I was just like a... Um, a dog on heat, you know, mm -hmm. I was like 19 years old, just moved to this new city, didn't know anyone, but everyone was in the same boat. So everyone was mm -hmm. out meeting people, there was freshers week, went on two weeks. And I was just going out every night and I just loved going out and partying. Um, so how all that came about really was, you know, I finished my first year of uni. I was like, right, I want to do a season abroad. I had a few friends in Malia as well um, that, were, that were doing well out there, looked like they were living a dream. I was like, right. I now know, I had that belief in my head to like now take that next step of going abroad by myself, getting a flight and, and starting new. Cause I knew that from uni, I went and did the same thing. I'd gone to a new city mm -hmm. that I'd only ever been to once before, didn't know anyone and managed to become quite a like outgoing popular guy. I was like, right, I'll go do that in Malia, uh, why not? So did my first season there. Um, I was just working on the strip PR in, wasn't making much money, mm. just peanuts, but really enjoyed it. You know, I was just happy. I got to drink for free, yeah. chat to girls, didn't have to worry Malia about anything. Great. Don't Malia, matter at yeah. that age of the money you're making, does it in Malia? It like, doesn't make, nah, just, nah, as long nah. as you've got enough to keep you afloat, yeah. I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, you know, like when you're sort of late teens, like, you know, early 20s, you know, it's just about having, yeah. fun, you know, go out and meet as many people as you can, you know, chat to as many girls as you can, just do your thing and, and enjoy yourself. Um, second season came and I was a bit more kind of conscious of like, all right, I've proved myself the first year. Now I can be a bit more competitive with where I work, mm -hmm. the amount of money I get. Still PR in, but mm -hmm. like rather than getting sort of 20, 30 euros a night, I'm saying, right, I'm 50 euros a night. Mm -hmm. I mean? Was this for clubs or was it for like events or what, what was the this sort of- This is just of... for bars. So, so for bars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Any in particular? Um, so Apollo I, maybe? My first ever job was working at R&B. Okay. At R&B yeah, bar. Yeah. Um, I also worked at Barbie and Candy. Yeah, Candy, um, I know Candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I worked for them, but then I didn't really like working for Candy purely because of the hours that you'd work, because it's a club, it's open late. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's open mm. till 6 a.m. So a lot of time you'd be PRing up to like 5 a.m., half four. <laughs> when you're working at a bar, usually you're finishing at half three, four a.m. So you can go out after, bit, yeah. or, you know what I mean? Um, so I ended up, kind of joining our R&B's enemy, which was Lush Bar. And okay. um, you might see like HS TikTok, they're all involved yeah. in our DMO and stuff. They do their thing with Lush Bar. Um, I was PR at that bar with a very good friend of mine. Um, and I loved it. And, and again, it was just kind of being able to make some kind of money out of something I enjoyed, get to drink for mm. free, meet new people. Um, and that's really how it started. And then I kind of took that kind of attitude and energy back to Liverpool with me. At this point I was going into I think my third year after my second season. Um, and I already started my other side hustle at this point. So when I'd finished my second season, I'd met a guy right at the end of it who had a clothing brand. He was a photographer. Um, he said, I want you to be the face of my brand. I like the look of you. 
Um, and that's when I started modeling. So I was doing that for a few years. Um, and just kind of getting all these little side hustles going, mm. really. So once I was had a bit of money together and, and, and you know, I actually had some money there, I sat down in Nando's one day with my friend and uh, shout out Josh, if you're watching. <laughs> um, and he just looked at me and he was like, Matt, you know, you're going out all the time and you know, you now know all these people. You're putting your money in someone else's pocket here. Um, why don't we start doing our own nights and our own events? Like people will, will come to your events, they'll come to your parties and we can make some money off it. And it's our own events, so we can make it how we want. We can put together all these things we've seen from all these different events and we can make it our right, event yeah. and bigger and better, you know? Um, and at that point, just to, to add to it, I was already kind of working in the events scene in, in Liverpool. So I was doing guest lists for a few nights here and there, mm -hmm. um, doing all right with it. And So you knew all the people already? Yes, yeah, so I, I knew all the kind of, I knew our competitors were, I yeah. knew like who was working for where, I knew kind of who to target, where all the accommodation was. Um, and that's when I, I started my own event company. Um, so I was doing that for about a year and a half. Um, we were focusing on techno and house. I had the inspiration from Ibiza, um, from mm -hmm. going there that first time. And um, and yeah, once I, I had that, it kind of all spiraled from there, you know? So I, I really, people kind of now started to see value in me. They realized that I could run a fairly successful event company mm -hmm. um, pretty much off my own back. And that's when like people kind of wanted me to help them in there. They wanted yeah. to work for this club, that club. Um, obviously I started getting my jobs in Ibiza and stuff. It all kind of spiraled from that. So when you say you got start getting jobs in Ibiza, was that from you what you were doing in Liverpool, or had you or were you going to people in Ibiza that you'd messaged, or how was that? How did that come back for Ibiza? Yeah, so with, with Ibiza, it was slightly different. It was like it was one of them where Ibiza was kind of I was going in there blindly, like I did with Malia. Okay. Um, hadn't been there before, but I knew I needed to kind of take a step up, go to somewhere a bit older that has more money, that's a bigger scene, and it was just more me at the time. I started to like my house and techno a bit, so I did go in there blindly. However, all the stuff I had learned and um, picked up on and the people I'd met in Liverpool and in the UK and that scene had really helped me when I was out there because I had a lot of friends out there, new people that were working there, here and there. Um, and that just kind of helped me really blossom when I was there. Uh, but again, it was starting from fresh as well and PR in making balls. Yeah, so you're 21 at this age? No, at this point I was 23. 23, so right. I was 21 when I'd done my, sorry, 22, 22. I'd done my first season at my last season, sorry, in Malia at 21, um, started my event company, and then I'd gone to a Ibiza at 22. Yeah. That's still quite young, yeah, I think. Yeah, fucking fair play. Yeah. That's so ballsy. I went to, went to Ibiza when I was 22 for the first time. Mm. So then for me to then go and uh, start trying to chew here, trying to get people to <laughs> let me work there and things like that is a completely different ball game. So yeah. Yeah. fair play to you, mate. And like you say, the, the fact that you've met all those people before, the game gives you links, it's network is your, yeah. your network. We'll 100%. probably say it numerous times, this podcast. Um, another thing, who, what was the sort of first opportunity that you got in IB for then? So obviously, you've just said there that you're going in blindly. Where was the first opportunity that arose for you to sort of go, well, right, okay, yeah. now I've got my foot in the door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, you know, a big lesson really on respect, um, providing value and just, yeah, gaining people's respect. This is a massive lesson really. So when I first went to IBIFA, for, um, I'll be completely honest, the first two weeks, I hated it because I, I flew out there. I was living with two of my friends from uni who had already been there for about three, four weeks. They already had their friends. Yeah. They already had their job. Mm. One of them worked days and couldn't be asked going out in the nights. He'd already been there for a month, hammered it. He was just done. Mm -hmm. The other guy worked nights, working at Lineker's, so he was just sleeping all day. So I, I pretty much, they they almost didn't, you know, they almost They've got their own there, life yeah, out, haven't I mean. they? Yeah. So I had no one to go out with. Um, as I say, I had a few friends out there here and there, but kind of, I'm one of the people I don't like just tagging along, mm. do you know what I mean? I like to kind of feel welcome and yeah, be invited, yeah, so, yeah. you know, rather than invite myself. Um, so, at two weeks have passed, I was like, right, I need a job. I was waiting on my national insurance number, which basically means that, um, so back before Brexit, if you had an NIE, you were able to work at places like Ocean, Man Bros, right, okay. mm -hmm. Box, basically legit jobs with legit companies. Mm. Um, so, I was waiting on my NIE number to come through. There was a massive backlog with that. I was like, right, I just need a job now, you know. I, I didn't have loads of money. I needed to go out and meet people. So, I went to the strip, to the West End. I don't know if you've yeah, been I've to the been. West End. Yeah, yeah. Been, yeah. The yeah. West End ain't great, you know. It's like Benidorm. It's, you know, Malia Strip is probably 10 times better yeah. than the Abu Strip. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, Strip's not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, exactly, exactly. You know, but... You know, the West End is the West End, you know, it's it's not somewhere you, if you go on holiday for a week in Ibiza, yeah. it's probably the last place on your list. Yeah. You might got it before I could, but you're not, right, okay. you know. Uh, so went up the strip and then I was just kind of, the same thing I did in Malia really, walk up the strip, looking at where I'd maybe want to work and just trying to, asking about trying to get a job. And 
obviously I'm getting grabbed by PRs left, right and centre. Mm. And there was one bar where I noticed that everyone there was English because a lot of them were Moroccan and stuff like that. Okay. Everyone there was English and um, see this big brummy fella at the door. Now a very good mate of mine. Shout out to Dave, if you're watching this. Um, That's, of course, his name Dave. Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave or Steve. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dave or Steve. It's one or the other, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> couldn't guess that. <laughs> Always. Um, but yeah, I saw that, that bar and um, I kind of got chatting to one of the girls that was PRing for him and then I met him and I just said, look, can I get a trial? Um, and he's like, yep, yeah, come tomorrow, um, do your trial. If you like, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you. Um, but this was a commission only job. So this wasn't um, cash in hand in night like Malia. But it was really nice hours because it was like nine till 2 a.m. Um, and which meant you could go out after and you actually got days off. So in Malia, it's seven nights a week. So you are <sighs> literally drinking seven nights a week for three months. I couldn't right? do it. It's very, very heavy. Um, whereas with this, I, I think it was kind of one, sometimes two days off a week. So I was like, perfect, you know? Um, and now I've kind of got friends that I work with, I've got people. So I started the next day the trial, um, I feel I did a decent job, obviously got, got the job and then um, ended up having an unreal season. Met um, Connor, who's now one of my best mates. Um, I worked with him all summer and, and that was that. But the point of the whole kind of story is that um, I gained Dave's respect. Dave liked me, you know, he had loads of people working PR, uh, you know, over the season, probably 30 mm. people like came and went, you know. Um, but I gained Dave's respect along with Connor and the next year came and it got to about April time, about a month before the season started. And um, I was just going to go back to a beef for literally just work on the strip again, mm -hmm. like, or just whatever. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I had no plans, no company. So he rang me up and he just said, I've just got a manager's job at Ocean. Um, wow. I want you and Connor to come work for us. Wow. I really liked what you did last year. Um, I really like you a lot. You Akashi's is good mates of mine. And, and bear in mind, like Ocean Beach, like, now it's not as hard to get a job if you're Irish or whatever because there's less competition because of Brexit. Mm -hmm. yeah. But back then it was solid to get a job there. They'd get 10,000 applicants a summer. Yeah? Oh, so is like, that what it is? Yeah, yeah. And people Jesus. would go through interviews and they'd have to go to like open, like interviews in Leeds and open day and stuff to get a job. And I just got a call saying you can, you know, and I got my accommodation. I had to pay for my accommodation, but Apollo, mm -hmm. you know, people watching, if, if you know Apollo, it's like only for um, Ocean staff, right. Ricky Lineker's people at company. Um, and straight away got a room sorted there, which was obviously way nicer than where I'd lived mm. the year before. Yeah. Um, and had the, had the job at Ocean. And that was a massive, massive foot in the door for me wow. because- What was that like working there? Yeah. Um, good man, like there's a lot of perks to working there, you know, yeah. particularly if you're a girl, more so if you're a girl yeah. than if you're a guy, but a lot of perks imagine, working there, you yeah. know, because you obviously you, you work for people that are very well connected and well respected over there. Um, and means that when I got out there, I had all my season passes, so I was getting to all the clubs for free. Um, you know, you. They have like unreal staff parties. Um, it's great. And you meet a hell of a lot of, you know, uh, influential people, yeah. famous people. Um, and just in general, people like kind of look at you in a different light. Like all of a sudden, all these girls that I would be messaging in the winter on Instagram are messaging me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now yeah. people, Power, it? <laughs> literally like, you know, even though to me, I was like, oh, it's just job at Ocean, which obviously is, is mint. We all go there and we go to Bifa. People look at you as some kind of, on some kind Someone of Someone like that can pedestal. almost sort you out. Yeah. It's like yeah, how yeah, people yeah. Be and they uh, want to be your best mate immediately. Yeah. That's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that was a, that a massive turning point for me. You know, as soon as I got that job and foot in door there, I started to become a pretty well-known face in Ibiza. Um, and, and yeah, I made the most of it and, and here I am now. So, so how long were you at Ocean Beach for? Just that one summer or did you do the summer after as well? Or? Yeah, so so that's the thing. That one summer I was there, so I was there for about five and a half months. Um, I stayed right to the bitter end. I think I was one of the last people. You've <laughs> <laughs> got to respect that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bro, give you like, a table for 50 quid. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, bro, like Ocean is shut. They had the staff party, un unbelievable night. Oh. Um, the staff had all flown home and there was I was just literally one of the last few to live the island. It was at a point where there weren't, there weren't even flights to the UK every day anymore. It was kind of like, oh I'm like, flying back to the UK on Tuesday. And if you missed that, you're fucked. You, know I mean? like, you have to fly to Paris on the way back or something. Right? Like, so in. So I, I stayed right to the end because I was like, look, this time, because the, the summer before I'd flown back early because of uni, but this right. point I'd now finished uni. Yeah. So I was like, I don't have anything to come home to. I'm gonna stay as late as I can. And the last event, I think it was like Solomon at um, Bermuda, Ben and Musa Park, where they used to have zoo projects. Um, and that was finished. And then the only place is open. I remember it was like my last, my leavers night. Yeah. <laughs> there was literally like an Irish bar. And, um, 
And I think even that sort of twelve. Do you know what I mean? Just sat on the street with a bottle of whiskey. Like the Pablo Escobar meme on the swing. Oh yeah. Matt well, just sat there thinking, no, I don't want to go. Well, it was, it was yeah. at a point, yeah, where it was like people were just people had gone from DM me on Insta saying, "Oh, living life, saying just go home, bro. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about <laughs> you. Know. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. I had him um, back because I was doing the, the modeling and stuff, yeah. And I had like a load of clothes got sent out to me. Luckily, some geezer sent me a jumper. I was just wearing that every day. Like, I just took <laughs> one out on. Like, just getting oh, them out man, of the sure. um, And I, you know what? I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if you've got nothing, like you say, uni's finished, you've got nothing to come back for. Why not make the most yeah, of it? Stay there as long it. as you can. That's Spend it. Christmas there. Yeah. Like, were you looking after like footballers and that then? Was yeah, that... yeah, yeah. So, you, um, Name a few like memorable guests that season: Dan Bilzerian, Ed Sheeran, <laughs> um, Lewis Capaldi. Dan Bilzerian. Hell of a lot of yeah, yeah. Hell of hell of a lot of Love Islanders. What was um, he like, Dan? Dan, you, don't, you can't really get close to Dan. No. Dan, just can't, Dan has a massive um, like I don't want to say word for a security team concert. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere he goes, do you know what I mean? So he'll have the girls with him, then he's got a security around him. So it's not one of them where you can just you know someone like Ed Sheeran or Lewis Capaldi, they'll just walk. You can literally just chat mm, from there. Yeah, and, like, yeah. Lewis Capaldi will just get in a normal queue. He ain't even like. Trying yeah. to skip queues or getting VIP, he's he's just a normal bloke, you yeah. know. Um, but someone like Dan Bilzerian will have just like McGregor would like mm. big concierge yeah. and stuff. So you don't really, you know, they'll be in the they'll be in the venue. You can't really get near them, and obviously they'll buy a few shows and you know they'll they'll ball yeah. out. But but you don't really get that. Personal yeah, yeah, I can yeah. imagine that. But but Dan yeah. Bilzerian is such. Like a huge, yeah. Oh, he's huge. And don't get yeah. me wrong, Ed Sheeran's huge, but I feel like, Jenny, I feel like because he's English, people get it more. Like, I, I feel like if we were to, you were to bump into someone like Tate, maybe, or like McGregor, like you say, I feel like McGregor would probably be okay, but the other two, like you say, they're just in, uh, untouchable because yeah, of they are, right? how they're powerful they are, how rich they are, what mm -hmm. they carry around, and like you say, their entourage is just, yeah. is, is ludicrous. Then, so after Ibiza, um, you've then gone to Miami. Is that, that's quite recent, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wh what, was my, what was Miami like? Yeah, man, so um, Miami, I was, I was meaning to go there for a few years. Um, again, that was from contacts from Ibiza. Okay. They set it all up. Um, they basically wanted to start doing the events that they were doing in a beef in Miami. Okay. Um, so my friends were going year after year and I was kind of like using them as the guinea pigs, if you like. Mm. So letting them go, see what it's like, see how they <laughs> do. Clever. And then, you know, when they've got their foot in a few more doors, I could be like, right, now's a good time for me yeah. to go. Um, especially with me, because I've, I've always been someone that's had some kind of responsibility back home, whether it's like some kind of side hustles or I had a missus or whatever it is, do you know what I mean? Um, whereas a lot of my pals, they have like, a job they can come back to whenever they want, do you know what mm. I mean? It might mm. be a delivery drive, whatever else. So it's pretty easy for them. It's kind of like no, mm. no the risk of rewards. Almost, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Miami was, Miami was just so different, man. So different to if I've done, like the people are different, the, you know, the clubs are so different, everything. Um, in terms of in terms of what? Like, because I th when we went to Ibiza, I thought this is the most, well, not the most expensive place, but like 36 euros for a double vodka and Red Bull, yeah. <laughs> as, as Johnny found out. That is ludicrous. Um, but I heard you say on the Graphic Kings podcast, like that in Miami is, is almost cheap. Is that, am I right in saying that? Yeah, not no so much way. 36, but like, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell people the story of the time. I went to a rave at Factory Town, so back when it was Miami Music Week, you had like ultra music okay. festival and stuff. I didn't do the festival, but I did a lot of the events around it. Um, obviously, a lot of English throughout, so I was chilling with them guys. And um, I went to Factory Town, go up to the bar, <laughs> hi, can get a vodka lemonade, please? And like, it was just like um, in a tiny cup like this, like a single, yeah, $42. Oh. $42, bro. Fuck, and, um, I really struggled parting ways with that. $42 for something like that big. Did you, say, did you say anything? Were you like, for that? <laughs> that? I'd already been in Miami for a month. Bro. Yeah, okay, so so you, yeah, yeah, okay, right. Dude. But I kind of thought, I mean, uh, I'd expect it in some of the restaurants, yeah, but yeah, yeah. in yeah. A, a sweaty rave, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. People walking around in fucking mankinis and shit, like at this place. Like, uh, 42, $42. Dollars. And the worst thing was, bro, like when I got that drink, yeah, I, it was like. Spilt it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wish I had done I tell you, right? Because um, in like America, yeah, when you ask for like a vodka lemonade, right? Um, the lemonade is not like what we have here, like right. the soda or whatever. It's like a um, squeezed yeah. lemon, like it's proper sour. And Do you have to ask for like Sprite? You know, I'm yeah, Sprite like you have Sprite, to ask yeah. for, yeah. But I usually drink like um, like Coke, like Diet Coke. So I just fancied it something different. Yeah. So I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. So I got it and I had one sip of it, bro. And it was just disgusting. <laughs> oh. I said to my mate, do you want this? Yeah, I want it. And we just left it. I couldn't, couldn't even drink it. Be gutted, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. I, it, bro. I was trying to get it down me. I was already feeling a bit worse for wear. <laughs> That is that. heartbreak. That's literally like what? ripping up forty-two dollars. Uh, yeah, just getting it and going like that, throwing it down yeah. the drain. In, 
terms of sort of eating out and stuff, is that just as expensive or? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the problem with it. Like with other places I went that were very expensive, like Tulum, it's like you can still go to a banging restaurant, have really nice food and it's pretty cheap. Mm. Um, a beef uh, can be expensive to eat out, but a lot of it's pretty reasonable, mm. just English prices, mm. you know. Um, but Miami, unless you're going to like uh, McDonald's or like maybe like a Wendy's or a chain, it, it's crazy expensive, bro. Because yeah. you have to remember that when you, you go to like even a fast food place, right? And you might see something on the menus, $11. But right, $11, yeah, I can pay that. But then you have to bear in mind that they add a tax onto it, mm-hmm. which I think it's like 20%. And then a lot of places expect a tip as well. You know, especially mm-hmm. if you pay cash, it's kind of like, uh, a lot of people places will actually add it on to the car thing. So you're actually just paying automatically for a tip. Or if you give like $20 bill, they're, they're just going to take some tip. Yeah. It's so expected there. So yeah. um, you can imagine like when the price is already more than it would be in another place and then you add on tax and a, and a tip it's it's crazy adds up doesn't it so were you earning when you were in miami what were you doing in miami like working at clubs is that oh, right yeah work as a promoter right okay yeah so was that good money we obviously to live in miami it sounds like it had to be good money but was it like profitable almost where you could have a good time i know obviously you probably got perks with the job but where like if you i don't know met a bird or something you could take her out somewhere was it was it worth in, the while in my opinion no so right. there was Promoters there that were crushing it, that were making a lot of money, but they were very far and few between, do you know what I mean? Um, and I think the amount of work you'd have to put in and you'd have to be a bit of a, you almost have to be a dickhead to be a really good promoter because you, you'd have to like steal girls off other people right. and all that kind of stuff. Um, th- the issue was that when I went to Miami, yeah, I already had um, plenty of other side hustles. So I was already doing like online, my online training. So I had my clients and I already, I already had a five hour time difference. So it was already difficult mm. to fit them in. Mm. On top of that, I obviously had like, I was releasing music videos. So I had to look at how I was gonna market that. I was trying to arrange other music videos out there. So I had to focus on my music. Um, and then I had like all the stuff coming up for a beef with the concierge and I was trying to plan all that. So I was already pretty flat out with other things. Um, and I knew that I couldn't neglect them because Miami isn't forever. Whereas these are long-term mm-hmm. things. Um, so <clears throat> that was the issue really those, it, it is one of them jobs where you get out what you put in um, how it works it's all on a commission basis pretty much everywhere so like the promote side of things generally speaking you have like contacts for nightclubs uh, restaurants and occasionally like yachts and stuff like that um, and how it works it's mad like the you basically get paid per girl um, that you bring <sighs> And then the other side of it is clients where you'll get a percentage of what they spend. So the idea is that, you know, it it sounds crazy. Like you literally will go and find um, girls each night. It doesn't matter where you find them, like Instagram, on the beach, a restaurant, it doesn't matter. But you find girls, you bring them along and the girls have to be, depending on the place you're bringing them, a a decent standard looks wise or what they think is decent standard. they have to be in high heels and that's about it as long as they're there they're 21 plus and have id that is you're getting mental, mental isn't it? um and that is absolutely that did any girls ever get like turned away because they're like nah you're not i'll be on. honest bro like it is insane like the fat shaming in miami bro is is bad. it is it's it really bad like the, ironic the, from americans isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's absolutely brutal man like because the thing with the the us yeah is like the, as I'm sure you all know, like the obesity in the US is the highest in the world, right? Mm. So obviously it's a, it's definitely a problem in the UK, it's high here, but it's another level in, in the US. So even though Miami is one of the fittest states in the the US, the people that are on vacation, if you like, are not from Miami. So they're from these places where it's, it's very bad. So generally speaking in England, if you meet a group of girls and you know, they're like fit girls, the, the good looking birds, generally speaking, the whole group look they're yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty much on par, mm. aren't they? There's not really going to be a girl that's like butters yeah, or yeah. a girl that's like really overweight. That just isn't how it is here. But over there, that is how it is. So like you could see like two absolute rockets on the beach and then their friend might be, you know, close to 20 stone. That's what it's like. <laughs> and, God. You know, me personally, I'm, I'm not someone that ever discriminates someone on the weight, how they look like, you know, whatever else. I literally have absolutely no issue with it. And I'll speak to them just as much as I'll speak mm. to the, the bear that I think is a 10 out of 10. But when you bring them to the club, if um, they're walking in and the first three friends 
are allowed in and then they see that girl that's maybe a bit heavy with, <laughs> the maybe a bit <laughs> heavy with that bit. Yeah, yeah, it's maybe a bit heavy. They'll literally just say, yeah, over there or not tonight. Um, oh my all your mates God. are getting let in and you, yeah, you're yeah, not. Yeah. Is this like a regular thing, right? Like, oh yeah, all the it? time. Like, it, it, it's like one of the, I'm not gonna, You'd be I'm not gonna name the, nice one, cheers, Bob. I'm not gonna name the club, you know, but um, one of the main clubs that I, I worked with, yeah, every night, right, they had like, so they had the normal queue, right, and then they had another queue at the other side, and that was just this like, <laughs> artificial queue they made, where they, for, Girls bless them that they've turned away on their looks. Oh. That um, they've kind of like that still have some hope of getting them. <laughs> and it was just full of them. Do you know what I mean? And then um, it, it, no, it was absolutely you. brutal, man. But, be in that but the queue. thing is, you genuinely is what you would want them girls to come in because the, the issue was that like if one of the girls get turned away, probably eight out of ten times they They'll won't. They won't. Yeah, they won't go mm. in. Like, they're pretty loyal to their friend. Probably more than the girls here. Like they do stick together. The girls out there, especially because mm. Miami, it's yeah, a bit yeah. more dangerous than. Here, you're abroad. They do stick together. So the issue might be you, you'll have like, I might get 10 girls for the night. Um, I bring them along and I'm thinking I'm getting $300 tonight, you know, or whatever it is that they're paying. And then one girl won't get in because she's either not got high heels or she's overweight or <coughs> they don't like the look of her. And that's my $300 gone. And not only am I down on money, but now like if I go into the club, they're either not going to let me in or if I... I'm allowed in. I've got to like join someone else's table and yeah. stand there with no girls. Yeah. It's, do you know what I mean? It's a bit embarrassing. So it was one of them jobs. I didn't, it sounded like the dream job, um, but I personally found it all a bit cringe. I mm. found the whole thing cringe. Definitely. Man. I think you probably learned so much from that as well yeah. in terms of what life is like over there stateside. And I know Miami, like you say, is the hot spot for it and it's yeah. like silly over there, but it probably made you appreciate Ibiza a little bit more as well, and honestly, man. I mean, I, I, the next question I was going to ask you: what What would be the best place you've you've sort of worked at, been to? I'd, I'm guessing Miami wouldn't be that high then. Um, you yeah, know, don't get me wrong. I still I still really enjoyed Miami, and there were certain things I loved about it that you can't really get anywhere else. Um, but from a working point of view, thousand percent of Ibiza. Right. Um, thousand percent of Ibiza. In terms of best destinations that I've been to that I really loved, um, Dubai and Vancouver. So Vancouver, I've got family there in Canada. Um, that is kind of like a Canadian Dubai. Um, it's all been built in the last 80, 90 uh, years. Mm. Um, absolutely love it. Really friendly people, really clean. It's got beaches there, forests, mountains, everything you've won. Um, really loved it there. Um, but Dubai, obviously, is, is Dubai. And I was, I was blown away when I went there earlier this year as well. We're, we've been just literally recently, the past few days, we've been speaking about we want to go to Dubai at some point. Next um, year. And actually, funnily enough, this is so mental that this happened, but we saw the clip of you on GraphKings podcast oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. where they're talking about moving to Dubai and they're on about moving the podcast to Dubai. You sent me that just as we planned for you to come on the podcast before yeah. I'd even seen anything about you. But oh, when really? you first messaged yeah. me saying, I, like, oh, you're right, guys, or, like, replying to me. And then one of our other boys yeah. sent both of us the exact same just TikTok, as we literally watching. within 10 seconds of everything happening and about the Dubai thing. And we were like, if this isn't like a, a fate, a fate Sorry, for us yeah. to be yeah. like, we need to look at going to Dubai as well, then then what is? But like you just said there, it, 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 I mean, Instagram is so fake and everything, but... It just looks like a different world out there. I mean, first first hand you'll be able to explain, but what what is that what is that place it, like? It really is, bro. Like, it's one of them where you get you see all the stories and stuff and all the big buildings, but when you're actually there and you see it in person, it's like even more surreal. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? It looks even better than it does on Instagram mm. pictures. And usually, as we know, like people <laughs> usually look a bit better on Instagram mm -hmm. than yeah. the real life. Yeah, that's the way around. You yeah. ain't getting catfished by Dubai. It really is what it is, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I mentioned it on GraphKings, but it's it's really clean, it's really safe, very friendly. Um, and the the main thing I think for you guys and myself is I just feel so motivated when I'm there, man. I mean, this is a reason I don't spend so long in the UK. You know, I'm from, York is my hometown. And obviously I've got a lot of people I love very much there. My mum lives there as well. But when I'm, I'm back in York, like even now I've been back for two weeks, like my level of motivation just goes zoop, mm. like this because I'm not around people that are, there's a few people I know that are doing well there and some great people, but generally speaking, no one is doing anything with their life. Very small town mentality. You can't even, I feel when I speak to people back in my hometown, right, that 
I feel like I'm bragging by just talking about my life. Yeah. yeah. And I'm genuinely not like, you know, if I say to someone, oh yeah, like what are you doing to, like this week or this weekend? And there's, oh yeah, just going to the club, what are you doing? I'm like, oh yeah, um, I've got a show here and then I'm going flying to a beef in the morning and then I've got this podcast. Like, yeah. that's what I'm doing. I'm not showing off, but like, <laughs> it just sounds, it's so like, Unrealistic to them. You go when you go back to like, like you say, like a hometown or a small town, like small town. You feel almost like you're, you've gone up certain amount of levels. Yeah, yeah. And like you say, you do feel a bit like a prick, but you're not even meaning to be. This yeah, is yeah, just yeah, your yeah. life now. This yeah, is like, yeah. and it's almost like I don't know. Like for me, especially some of my mates back home, like I love them. They'll always be my schoolmates and things like that. But I look at them sometimes and just think, how can you not want more? Like surely there must exactly be something that makes want. inside of you that's like. Urging you to go and do something like like that, like you say there, um, and I think it is just small town mentality. I think you bang on with that, Um, and and that's exactly it. But that's why, like you know, coming off that point, that's why I liked being in Dubai and and even to be fair, Miami to an extent when it wasn't promoters I was around. When I was actually speaking to people that were clients or like you know people that are living there, working there, because they obviously are successful at something to be able to live there. And it's like you you can talk about these things, and people are genuinely happy for you. They want to help you that kind of thing whereas as i say when you're back in the uk generally speaking most people don't want to see you succeed, succeed. No, they they do don't. well they don't you know i put a story the other day like about it but they people will want to know you when you have succeeded and you've got something to offer them you've got some kind of value but when you're on that come up like mm. they will no one's bothered are they like, you no. know my music and stuff people you know like i saw my old, i saw my old manager when i used to i used to work at premier in back in the day right i saw my old manager and he was like um he said, oh, yeah, so what are you doing now then and all this, right? He knows, like, he knows what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. knows a man's been in Miami. Man's yeah. been, right? He knows that I'm, I'm living good, do you know what I mean? And what have you been doing all this? And I, t- I just did it, said it as bluntly as possible, yeah. like, because I didn't want to, I was showing off. He goes, um, so you're doing the music. You're like, hilarious, isn't it? Like, that was hilarious. So, like, you know, as he tried to put me down, just be like, oh, it's hilarious that you think you could yeah. do music yeah. or something like that. And I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking, well, You've Is worked, he still at Premier Inn? You've worked at yeah. Premier Inn for the last 15, 20 years. Yeah. You look exactly the same. You know, you've got nothing really else going for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's because they're I mean? so like, narrow-minded, they can't comprehend so like, going out the comfort zone. It's it's not yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is, getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need broadens, people like that. Exactly, it broadens your horizon so <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah. And just touch back on what you said, <clears> in Dubai, <throat> like, you're with so many people what we say a lot is iron sharpens iron as well which is like basically saying if you're around all these successful people you are just going to start wanting to do successful things yeah. wanting to earn a lot of money wanting to do your own thing to almost almost like fit in i guess is, mm. is the way you'd oh, say yeah, it yeah. because you don't you That's it. if you're in that circle and then you're like the guy who's a bit like oh well, i'm tagging along like you say you don't want to be that tag along you want to be in there and be like i'm gonna i'm a pretty decent part of this friendship group, I'm a pretty decent part of this circle, I have my own things going for me, I can bring something to this group and I think, like you say, when you're around other people like that, it just, 100%, uh, without you even thinking or knowing or you start thinking about all these things and you start wanting to do all these things and you're like, before you know it, like shit, I'm, I'm now yeah. sort of in, I'm now sort of snowball successful effect, myself, yeah, it? it's a snowball yeah. effect, definitely, um, well I think we need to go to Dubai. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if, it's 12, <laughs> even if it's just for a little visit. Yeah. Just a nice week no, away one, or something. One way flight for me. Yeah, 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 yeah one yeah, way yeah, flight. Yeah, we'll be yeah, like, you know staying until the very end. Can I knock on people's doors? Can we live with <laughs> <laughs> In terms of like living in Dubai, is it expensive or is it? Is it I think there is a bit of a myth in there. Yeah. Stigmatism. Like, it is expensive to live Yeah, there. so I mean, I've, I've not lived there myself, but I've obviously looked into it pretty heavily because I do plan to move mm. there. Um, and I would have probably said to you it was expensive if I hadn't gone to Miami and lived there. Yeah. Um, but when I've looked into it, it looks pretty similar to... People say similar to London. Prim- similar, similar to London, yeah. So mm. cheaper than Miami, similar to London. Um, but you ca- there is ways of kind of living a bit more on a budget there as opposed to how there was in Miami, do you know what I mean? Um, there is places you can eat that are on a budget. I don't think like, you know, generally speaking, you can go to like, you can get a gym membership at a certain place. It might not be the best gym, but you, you're not paying a fortune. Mm. Whereas like Miami, you're paying like $200 for a gym mm. membership. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, I think in Dubai as well, a lot of the apartments that people tend to rent, a lot of them have gyms in them, don't they? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, so exactly. Like, yeah, big skyscrapers. Yeah. So they've got yeah. gyms, they have pools a lot of the time. So they have they have all that there as well, you know, which, which really helps. Um, mm. But I don't think it, it's crazy expensive. It's one of them where you can live, you can live within your means if you mm. haven't got a lot of money. You do still need some money there, but... Um, if you've just got a kind of a bit of side and you want to kind of build on it, it's definitely doable, you know? Right, so obviously, Matt, you've got the, the music, you've touched on the music quite a bit there. Um, 
we had a look at uh, a look at some of the videos, I listened to a few songs, the videos, right? <laughs> I said to him before we came out, I went, have you seen the videos? And he went, yeah, yeah. I was like, they're mental, aren't they? <laughs> Just all the birds in the background. I said to, <laughs> said to Rafa, I was like, them videos look fantastic. Yeah, yeah, good, um, good. And what is music now for you, I guess? Is it something that you want to take on into into future life and that be sort of the, the main driven force or is it something that you just enjoy doing? What is music to you and where do you want to take it? Yeah, man, good question. I think um, with music, obviously something I, I really love doing, um, passionate about it, but really only this year I've fully started taking it serious. So it's now, it's only now where I genuinely really am constantly fitting my life around, you know, music and a schedule kind of thing. Um, so I'm still not, you know, getting too carried away and make it my main thing purely because I'm nowhere, nowhere near where I want to be. Do you know what I mean? I've, I'm still not making any money off it. I still haven't learned how to use like Spotify and mm -hmm. all these different platforms. Um, I definitely haven't marketed it, market, marketed, we'll get it in the end, <laughs> as well as I could have done. Um, you know, I haven't really used TikTok and stuff like that. So I know that I'm nowhere near reaching the potential I get from music. <clears throat> um, so again, it is kind of like not pushed to the side, but there's still, I've still got plenty of other focuses mm. and I have to allocate my time towards music carefully and not put all my time and money into something that isn't making me a quick return, you know? Um, but the plan is, you know, onwards and upwards. Um, I jumped on stage for the first time two days ago. Oh, um, that? Billy Boy Fitch absolutely loved it. Oh, I it. saw that actually, yeah, didn't yeah, I? I replied yeah, yeah. to it saying. Yeah, yeah, Big Up Fitch, if you're watching, um, jumped on. He had basically like a mixtape launch and he'd done like a, a show with like loads of artists from York. Um, Leeds jumped on, um, really, really good night, and, and I absolutely loved it, man. He had me on, brought me on last, which was, was a pleasure. Came and did a couple of songs, got a great reception from the crowd, um, and genuinely felt like this is where I should be. Mm. You know, I felt like, mm. yeah, this is kind of, I, I like this. Do you know what I mean? I like this. Do you get the buzz from it where you want to do it again immediately, and you're like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking I just want to song after song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no nerves, nothing. Was, it was there just not? Like, nah, nah, nah. Fair. Like, I think the only nerves I had was before I got to the venue, sort of just not knowing what to expect because it was literally like the night before I got asked to do it. Well, so okay. it was, was like, it? I didn't have time to mentally prepare mm. for it. It kind of kicks in, but but now I'm not at all, man. It was just it was just going into the unknown, but that's what I've done my whole life. I've always took risks and I've always put myself out of my comfort zone. So it was just almost another day in the office. Um, but yeah, another show, August the 5th, flying back from the beef and for that. That's um, in Belgrave, isn't it? Belgrade Music Hall, yeah, 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 hopefully we'll see you there. We'll go to that, yeah, 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 to see you there, honestly. Um, but I've got um, a lot of music there ready to drop, so there's going to be a song called Belly Air, and we'll release that next month. It's named after a clothing brand, if you've heard of them. If not, go check them out. Okay. Um, but I've, yeah, written a song for them, and then also um, I've got a house tune coming as well, and that's going to be filmed in a beef at the end of this month as wow. well, so we're just setting that up with the villa, the boat, the girls, stuff like that. Um, God, I bet so that'll be chaos. I'm, so yeah, th th this <laughs> summer's very important, man. I have to make sure that this summer I capitalise on it because, like, as I say, with my following and my audience, my network, summer is our year where mm. we all kind of come out and we're alive. We're, you know, we're out we're partying. I need to make sure they play my tunes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when they're at pre-drinks, after parties, my tune's getting played at events, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm kind of taking it as it comes, but I just think these next two songs with a bit of guidance from elsewhere and stuff on the marketing, I think that could be the turning point for me where I actually start getting more bookings and potentially even getting the charts and really, really grow my kind of, my name, you know? Are you wanting to go down, obviously the stuff that you've done sort of up till now is mostly rap, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. rap mostly. You just said there you got a house tune coming out. Are you wanting to go more down the house route? You want to go more down the rap route? Is it a bit of both? What would be the sort of ideal genre for you to go into, I guess? A bit of both, really, but I always say like my music, I feel like I have my own sound. So people say, well, yeah, who do you sound like? Who's your influences? I have influences, but very much my own sound. So like Smooth, the video on Dubai, that's like a 90s American rap yeah. beat. Um, my first tune, Beaver, is like a Arabic, like kind okay. of like sound. Do you know what I'm saying? So, the house is what house is what sells. Do you know what I'm saying? So, if you mm. notice, a lot of artists now, like you look at Morrison, Mist, see Tom Zanetti, um, even like J.K. people like that. They're all jumping on like house tunes, um, and they're doing well at it. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's getting them more hits than the real rap stuff is. And know? especially in Ibiza as well, like you say, uh, with you going there in the summer and that being the place for this sort of thing to kick off. 
house is the biggest sort of genre over there, house yeah. and techno. So it'd, sure. it'd be almost daft for you not to make use of yeah. that with everything that you've got in Ibiza as well. It'd be, yeah, that's it. It'd be stupid not to capitalise in it. And the thing is, I'm fully aware that a lot of my mates, even though they'll support me to the fullest, they'll share my stuff, they wouldn't normally listen to my mm. music. So I need to make music that I enjoy because I do love house and I do think I sound good on it, but also stuff that realistically my audience is going to yeah. listen to. Mm. There's no point having like, a following and a platform that if it isn't catered to what you're producing, you know? What's the end goal with it then? Obviously you mentioned you want to get, want to get into the charts, but what after that? The end goal would be to blow, just to, to blow. It, yeah. and, and, you know, it just, end of the day, I always say to anyone like, you know, chase your dreams and do something that mm. you enjoy doing, that you love, um, do your very best to, to get there with something that you enjoy doing. And for me, of anything I do, it's music that I really enjoy the most. It's music that I feel I'm best at. Um, so the goal will be to blow and I suppose the, what's the definition of blowing there mm. probably is none because you know there's people that we would see as blown famous whatever that don't even think they've made it mm -hmm. yet but when I say blown it's to be able to live off music okay. so fully off music I'm I'm still the kind of guy where I'm a hustler so I probably would always have my fingers in a few different pies but um, to be able to just live off music tour around the world um, you know Keep making the dream, these, innit? yeah, make these crazy videos and be able to collab with these top artists. Like that would be a dream for me. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm also fully aware that, like anything, music has a, se a shelf life, and the older I get, the probably the slimmer my chance gets of that. Because mm -hmm. you know, you look at these people fresh in the scene now, H R D people like that. Like they're young people, they're young faces, and you know, the fact that they're young will have helped them. Stormzy mm -hmm. when he was younger, now he's a few years on me. But it's important to really, while you're in your twenties. Mm -hmm boom, get, get yourself out there. Because yeah. when you get to your 30s, you're no longer appealing to them young girls on TikTok and the younger guys as much. You kind of, you now have a bit of a niche crowd yeah. and it makes it a lot harder. So these next few years are crucial. You know? I've never thought um, of it like that with music. It's so true. And neither, yeah, yeah you're, you're right. It's bang on the money. I mean, Tom Zanetti sort of made it, uh, elongated his career probably quite a lot. Mm -hmm. is, is it, how old is Tom Zanetti? He's pushing That's late 30s. 30, I think he's about 33. 34. Yeah, oh, early 30s. Okay, I thought he was late 30s. But like you say, yeah, I, Now's the time. I mean, you're 27. You're not old, mate. But um, you're you're 44, aren't you? Yeah, I'm 26. <laughs> and all I get from these lot is, you're so old. You're so old. You're so you know, 27. Yeah. It's like you're not old. Yeah. <laughs> the reason we say that is because when we were all at UD together, you we joined the football team late. You know, so yeah. we all met through the football team, like all our boys. Yeah. So you joined the football team in your third year, whereas we were all first year. So mm. we're all like 22, oh, 23, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then now he's the old one. So when we were back on a holiday, booking the holidays and stuff, I was like, I need your passport details. And I'd, <laughs> I'd sent a photo of like um, the date of birth and put like 1967. I was like, Rafter, why's your passport? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, back to, back to the original point. Yeah, 27 isn't old. And like you say, you have got to, I know what you mean by you've got to hit the ground running. I always think the amount of times that I compare sort of me now at 23, I was even saying in the office the other day, like I feel old now at 23 and like you look at other 23 year olds like we just said a footballer who, who plays for Leeds turned 24 yesterday and we were like how the fuck is he 24 and like well I'm 23 and I, I mm. almost yeah. haven't done anything do you know what I mean but then you have to look at it from so many different perspectives because it is almost like you're the top one percent it's almost like they've had all these things going from in life and it's um you can't like go on comparing yeah yourself, you can't can you? yeah it's it's You're so never going to be. It's so difficult, it's especially so difficult. with Instagram. Social media yeah. now, it, it's so so difficult. You know, it's like, you know, the amount of times I see my pals or I come, even when I come home, for example, I went to that show and people coming up to me. There's some of these guys I haven't seen for like ten years, you know, eleven years and and whatnot, and they come up to me they're like, "You're smashing it. You're killing. It, you're living life." Like I am nowhere near yeah. where I want to be. Do you know what I'm saying? But to these people, I'm like up here, yeah. and then I look at other people that I see as up here and me yeah. down there. So it's. It's one of them where it's good to an extent to um, not so much compare to other people, but to look at other people and use them as motivation. You know, like I have a lot of friends that are my age and multi-millionaires, you know what I mean? They're, they're set already for life and they're only going to get richer. And I look at them happy for them and motivated by them. And I use that to my benefit in the sense that like I learn off them. People, they, they tell me things and I listen to them. I take note. I don't, I'm not arrogant. I'm not above. I think I'm too good to listen to people because I know that their advice and knowledge has got them to where they yeah. are. They obviously know something, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah, so, but at the same time, comparing yourself to other people, it can also be a detrimental thing and you can, it's how people get depressed. And you get in your own head, don't you? Yeah, of course yeah, you, you, know, do. you, you do think you're a loser and you know, whatever else, but look, everyone has their own lane and people 
people do well at different times of their life and people have other definitions of happiness and doing well. Some mm. people don't want to be rich. They don't want to be famous. They're happy just, you know, having a, a wife and kids and, you know, just a, a small enough house mm. and just yeah. being able to, you know, walk to the shop and back. <laughs> it's yeah, like so true. Everyone has different, true. different yeah. things, you know? Yeah, it's um, so I think you've hit that perfectly there, mate. Um, I, I think that is so true. Everyone's, everyone is different and it is so hard to compare and contrast and everything like that and to not do it, but then... You've almost got to be. That's why everyone says about. Exposed all the time. Aren't yeah, you? yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, that's why everyone says like uh, loads of success, successful people all say about writing down to be uh, grateful for the day and stuff like. You read the book The Secret, didn't you? Yeah. And that, when I first met Lou, you just read it or you were reading it, and you told me that you'd wake up every morning and say thank you. Thank you. Thank with my right. And then and you with as my soon left. As you got out of bed, so you'd I'll say thank you. I'll stop doing it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you were just saying, I thought, what yeah. the fuck's this bloke yeah, on? But yeah, now, you did, didn't you? Yeah, but <laughs> now yeah. you can almost see the... But it's so true. Yeah, you have yeah, got to be grateful. You have, 100%, you've, things, got, you've, got to, you've got to be grateful. Um, There's a mental thing as well. Yeah. I think you're just having like mental power, whatever that is, like just something that kind of gets you up in the morning, you think, right, yeah, today's the day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Even if it's just stamping your feet, it just gets you into gear and you think, boom, right, this is how I'm starting my day. I'm starting it. Grateful, positive, driven, let's go. Yeah. Being on the right wavelength, isn't it? Well, I, I want to ask you, this is a bit off topic, but in obviously you, with what your job was or still is, you go out partying loads, probably drink alcohol loads. <clears throat> Does, do you find drinking alcohol affects you really badly or can you sort of suffice on it? Because we're I, when I don't drink alcohol, I'm on a, such a different wavelength. Like I feel like I can do so much more and then I'll have like maybe like a two day bender or something. And I'll, it will set me back like weeks. Can you can you hack it almost? Or, or? Do you know what, right? Probably it's probably the most common <laughs> question I get is like, mm. how do you do this? How do you live? I mean, obviously, we've only kind of kind of been in touch for a week or two. Mm. But you know, to people that have got me on socials for a few years or even know me, they see that sometimes, as I say, when I've been in Miami or Greece or whatever, like I'll be out six nights a week for four or five months. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm ju I am drinking all those nights. Um, so the answer is a few things really. Like, firstly, um, I. <laughs> One thing with me is you'll never see me out my head. You'll never see me. I'm never that person that needs carrying home, um, that's being sick, mm. a state of my, like making a tip of myself, you know, in an absolute state. So I very much um, have a good tolerance, but I also don't enjoy getting to that level. Okay. So that helps because it means that, you know, I'm probably even... You almost know when to, to stop. Yeah, I know when to stop and I'm probably not going to feel as bad the next day. And it also means that when you're in place like a beefer, um, rather than going back to someone's kitchen till 9 a.m., I'll call it a night, leave on a high when the club's up closed or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or when I don't feel like it's worth staying up. And I can wake up fresh and I'll go to the gym in the morning. They're all still sat in the kitchen, debate, yeah. contemplating life, spent all the money and mm -hmm. depressed for two days. So that's the first one. Um, the next thing I think, just in general, I have very good mental strength and my mental health is very, very, very stable, you know? So I, if I have days where I'm not feeling too great for whatever reason, uh, I've had a, a heavy night, I done this so many times before i just know this feeling okay. i know it's gonna i know it's gonna wear away i know i mean i'm very much in control of my emotions you know and i'm someone who i am that weirdo that can wake up after a festival and go to the gym and I, i'll just force myself there bro like i can do that and being that mentally strong is way more powerful than any hangover mm -hmm. any come down discipline yeah. yeah 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 just being able to do that and um and, and that's really it. And I think genetically, I am someone who can maybe just just doesn't get affected that bad by stuff. As I say, I'm never sick from drinking alcohol. I, I, I don't really react badly to things, you know. Um, so I just think it's them things. I think it's like mental strength. I think tolerance, knowing your limits and not wanting to go overboard and, and discipline of doing something with your day the next day, you know, making sure like you're up and about, you know, get yourself a shower, go to the gym, do something, don't just lays about and linger in bed and things feelings. like yeah. yeah yeah absolutely i mean uh, that's one of the hardest things that i think I, and probably like you say the amount of practice that you've had it is almost made you like an expert yeah. <laughs> which is a good place to be yeah. in because everything business related a lot of times is going for drinks it's going for let's go to the next bar and the next bar and then we'll end up at a club and band table or whatever it would be but you've got to do that to meet the right people and and expand your network so what i will um, just say adding to that boys um Obviously, I am fully aware it's not, it isn't necessarily good for me. Do you know what I mean? And it's hard because I am, one of the coaching things I do is obviously fitness. And yeah. it's like, I'm promoting obviously being healthy and healthy lifestyle. It's like, I am fully aware that obviously when I'm drinking, I'm in these environments, it's 
doing damage to me. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There's no doubt, obviously, over the long term, it will do damage to you. So it's not something I ever promote. But I look at it and I say, right, if you're going to live that lifestyle like I do it, do it in the healthiest way possible. So it's like with me, I think, right, I'm in an environment where like, I can't just go to Raven and Beef and not drink. I might have discipline in other ways, but not like that. Mm -hmm. I have to be like on some sort of level, yeah? But, you know, I know the bare minimum of how to do that, but still enjoy myself. Um, and I also keep everything else in check. So my, I eat clean, you know, I try to get a good amount of sleep where I can, um, and I train a lot. So I'm kind of promoting, right, you know, go and have fun and do your thing and don't listen to people that say like if you have one sig you're gonna die but just focus on the other aspects balance. of your life, yeah. keeping them yeah balance the balance so is important. key absolutely in, in terms of like your sleep sleeping pattern are you getting up really early or is it i've got to it get must, eight yeah, hours I was say, your sleep pattern must be all over the oh, shop it's I, I don't depending it's, where you are yeah it's mashed potato mate like <laughs> yeah when last year when i was um working a job like full time I had to, I was waking up at half five every single morning, well, five days a week. I'd go to the gym and then I'd be in the office for 8 a.m. Um, then when, within about a couple of weeks of that, I was obviously in Dubai where it was like, I can't remember how many hours ahead they are, like maybe like five, six hours ahead or something like that. Um, so I was on that sleeping pattern, partying mm. every night. And then I went to Miami, which was like uh, five, behind, hours, five hours behind <laughs> the, UK. the UK. So it was just complete change of, of um, same pattern and on top of that obviously I was working in nightlife so I had to be in a, a club till like 4am you know nearly every oh night um, I was doing a lot of partying and raving and whatever happened after that so it was like same pattern was all over the shop but um, generally speaking I am someone who does need a lot of sleep so mm. you see how you get you know a lot of my pals go to Ibiza and they can just go two three days straight I for one don't enjoy that for two can't do that because I, I have to be up and do things but for free, I just need sleep. sleep I yeah. like sleep, you know. So my sleeping pattern isn't great. I don't get as much sleep as I'd like to get. That's something I want to improve. Um, but I always do make sure I get rest. It's, it's so important, man, because when mm -hmm. you need to focus and concentrate and train and recover and everything else, mm -hmm. it all comes down to sleep. Of course it does. You know? I mean, you're in good nick anyway. So yeah. it, uh, you, it's just the top, bro. It's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've maintained the the whatever you're doing seems to be working almost. Um, but sleep is one of our boys is. He, if he doesn't get enough sleep, like when we went to Magaluf, he is in the worst mood ever. But if he gets yeah. enough sleep, if he's recovered, then he's absolutely on top form, he's bang at it, and yeah. he's great to be around. But uh, you said, didn't you? You said, we know now just to leave him for half an yeah. hour, let him wake up. Ignore him at morning Yeah, and then hours. as soon as he's up, he, he's yeah. back, back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Matt, I want to go on to some sort of quick fire questions, obviously, with everything oh. that you've done in your life. Um this will probably be quite interesting for a lot of viewers, might get some uh, some funny answers here, and I'll, I'm quite looking forward to these. Um, so, I mean, you touched on it earlier with Dan Bilzerian. Um, who's like the biggest celebrity that you've either worked with or you've met doing what you do or hung out with, maybe? Um, probably would, it, would it be Dan Bilzerian or? Um, I'd say that I've actually had a conversation with probably either the Nelt Boys or Ed oh, Sheeran. Wow. Um, Lewis Capaldi, if you put him up there as well. Um, what were the Nelt Boys like? Nelt Boys are just exactly how you see them on the video, do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, except it's kind of weird because see with Nelt, right? It's like, you kind of look at them as like, they're sort of like nerds in it. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, they're like, if they was at college, they're like the geeks in it. Mm -hmm. the yeah, yeah. But in Miami, they're obviously in these like top, top spots and they've got all the baddies like wanting to be mm. on their table because everyone there just wants guys with money and yeah, yeah, yeah. the best table, yeah. So, um, it's kind of weird seeing them like they're looking how they are with like the vests on and yeah. like the short stuff, like looking the way they do, but then they're kind of painting under the brush of someone that's like dripped out and yeah, it's a bit like the side men, isn't it? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ex exactly like American side men. Yeah, exactly the same kind of thing. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's because it's a bit like a guilty pleasure, you know, because yeah. the amount of birds that watch the side men that we know, like my little sisters watch them, all their friends watch them, all these girls watch them, all these girls watch them, and. It, it's just because they're funny. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. girls are attracted to people that are funny. Like, as long as you can make a bird laugh, like Will says on the in-between is, I'll, I'll get you into bed. Like, it's young so Billy, right. Chunk, exactly, like yeah. Them yeah. Two I guarantee that, that young Philly probably clean up. Oh, 100%. Out, I mean, yeah. he's a good-looking fella as well. Yeah, he's but because he, he's piss funny, birds just love him and he's putting himself yeah, out there. Very true. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to meet the Nelt boys. I, yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah, Did you have yeah. a conversation with them? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke to Steiny and there was another oh, yeah, Steiny as well. Um, you didn't really see off... Um, 
You didn't really see Steve or Kyle yeah. as often. Um, and I didn't personally speak to them, but I saw them in person yeah. loads yeah. of times, man. Yeah, they're, they're and that all, was in Miami. They're active, man. They're always out. Yeah, Mainly yeah. spending big money. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, because I wasn't looking after the table or anything. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. know exactly what they were spending, but yeah. they'd, they'd be spending a fair bit, yeah. man, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that brings me on to the next question perfectly. What's the, the highest amount of money you've seen that somebody spend either on a table, on a, on a bottle, or, or something like that? To my knowledge, 100K. That was in Mr. Jones, Miami, 100K. Um, and they were only there for a couple hours. So, oh, it was like a, a, promoter had, <laughs> a promoter had brought them in. So, there was one of their clients. I don't know anything about them. I don't know who they were. If they were rappers, you know, I didn't recognise them. But these guys came in and... The thing with, you know, people getting tables and spending money is, is, generally speaking, there's only so much you can spend on a bottle. But where you can really spend your money is the shows because mm. um, some people have so much money they don't know what to do with it. So they think, right, what can I do? When you're like, when you get the table, the idea of getting the table is like, you've got your section, you've got a bit of like, when you're in, a bit of leeway when you're in the club. So yeah. like, you know, the girls, you can get girls onto your table and everyone's kind of look at you like, yo, who are they, do you know what I'm saying? Especially when you're in Miami, you're going there to flex, bro, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're not getting a table in Miami unless you want to flex. And um, it's all about who's spending the most money. And obviously, when once you've got the bottles in, what can you do next? It shows. Mm. And in Mr. Jones, they have like, um, it's like a car, a car or spaceship or something. Anyone that's been, Mr. Jones knows, yeah. And it like goes across the top and you can like get in it and like girls can get in it and stuff. And it just flies, it flies across the top of the club. Um, <laughs> So they were doing all that stuff and then they were even like, there's like a video on my phone somewhere and it's like, they got one of the girls, cause all the girls that work there, they're all like baddies, yeah, yeah. massive asses, like in all the thongs and stuff. And they got her to come over and uh, she was like, and they were like just spraying her with champagne. And then she was like, you know, like twerking in the champagne and they were doing all these mad things and like girls coming out of like boxes from the sky, just, just like crazy yeah. shit, but they just, Money on yeah. that, do you know what I mean? And as far as we know, obviously, from management, it was 100k that they spent. And they, I was, I got to that club before them and left after them, yeah. So, like, they, I don't know how they Christ. managed to do so much money in that time and then just, just got up and left, man. But must have been some um, night for them, boys, yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. That, is, um, that is so funny, though. Can you imagine one of us being in that space? Like, <laughs> oh, lads, yeah, 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 yeah. quick fat like that, <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. unbelievable. It'd be, it'd be awkward, though, because when, when you work in promote, yeah, obviously, like. We would get assigned a table and we uh, get in the club. If it's quiet, we'd get our own table with the girls. If it's busy, we're joining like another promoter would join us. They're all like crap. Oh, okay, yeah. We're mm. drinking house spirits. So like because they're giving us it for free, they're not gonna give you the best bottles, mm. right? So it's always awkward because obviously you bring girls to the club and like at first you're kind of feeling like a boss because you've got your own table. Mm. Sometimes it'd be just me with like ten girls, you know what I'm saying? Like and I'm looking after that table. And then like the spaceship would go up and someone's obviously bought the show. And they'd be like, oh, can we get in that? And I'm thinking like, <laughs> I ain't buying it. <laughs> You're checking right. in Santander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm nah. but, I'm, but I'm also thinking, please don't go over and ask that geese because he's just going to take all exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then you're just, like, like, yeah, I'm yeah, outside, just, just waving I'm just it. I'm sat there with my smell, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that is man, class. So. Okay, next one then. Um, what's the maddest story you've got from being a I, I can imagine there's absolutely a stupid amount of stories that you've got. But what is one story that sort of stands out where you're like, that, that was mental? Um, few, I t cause, cause oh, just like, how you worded it that was mental yeah, there's, there's a few I've got in my head now I'm just thinking what I can say on camera what I can't um, I'll tell you one mad one right and I tell this story to people a lot because it just it's just a weird thing that happened like obviously a beef you used to see a lot of crazy things like yeah. things would happen and sometimes you just wake up the next day and forget about it you'd, re you'd look back and you'd be like that would never happen anywhere else in the world yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying like or did that even happen I'm yeah, imagining yeah. things you know what I'm saying was I just got my head completely like, yeah. you know what you mean get it um, I get that <laughs> but like one weird this is just like a, a weird situation that there's no explanation for yeah so um, <laughs> what is this going to be my first season in Ibiza um, and kind of towards the end of the summer so one of my mate, uh, mates flew out, he come, over, come, he come with his missus, right? And um, she didn't want to go out that night. So I think they'd already been out a couple of nights together. Um, she didn't want to go out that night and it was Paradise at DC10. Um, so anyone that doesn't know, DC10 is like a very iconic club in, in uh, Ibiza, very, very heavy, hardcore, full of some very weird characters. Um, you either love it or hate it, you know? Mm. Uh, but for me, I, I used to love it there, still, still do. So we were going there, that was his first time. and. Um, when we, just me and him going, um, I've been chatting to this girl for a few days um, on Insta. So she was just out on holiday. So I was like, boom, we'll go meet them. She's there with a friend. Um, obviously my, my mate had a missus, so it was a bit of a, he weren't really 
chatting to them, yeah, but yeah, it was just yeah. kind of coming along. So anyway, we met them in the smoke area, raved with them all night, really sound girls, both fit, do you know what I mean? Um, so gets to the end of the night, they're like, oh, what are you doing now? Um, and obviously it's, it's one of them, it's DZ Tennessee, you're not like fully grafting them, you know what I'm saying? But like I'd given a little smooch in the, in the club and that and like, you know, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. So getting a taxi around, we're getting a, a taxi together. So at this point, I'm dropping my mate off at um, his hotel at for Rocks, right? Which is like near where I was staying anyway. Um, so I'm with the two girls, right? So I'm like, right, take them, <laughs> take them back. And I'm kind of like, they're both nice, but I'm not, I'm not out here trying to get a threesome after these yeah. things. You know what I'm saying? I ain't Superman, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking like, we'll just go back, see what's what. So we get back and um Back then, there was no such thing as smart whips. Yeah, it was like obviously the kind of stuff. I yeah, personally yeah. don't do balloons anymore, um, but back then I used to love them. Um, so I had a box of canisters, like 24, um, yeah, 24 yeah, yeah, yeah. thingies, canisters, whatever. And um, I get back, no one's in. My mate's in the, well, my mate's in the room asleep, but no one else is in. And I kind of, I had a bed in the living room. It was just a little pit in the corner, yeah? So we're on the balcony and we're doing these balloons. now. I genuinely thought these these birds were like really normal sound girls, yeah. Until we started doing balloons, bro. Mm. Right. So they did a balloon. We all done one together, yeah. You know how it is. You all do your balloon, put a tune on and stuff. And then like me personally, I do a balloon and then I'll just go get a bit light headed and I'm like, uh, and then like make another one, right? They've done this balloon. They're looking at each other and they're like, "Did you see that?" And I'm like, "Oh no." Looking at them like this and like, yeah. I saw that, did you see it as well? And they were like saying these mad trips. I'm talking like, oh, I'm, I'm in a field and this appeared oh, no. and that appeared. And I kind of like, I was like laughing at first. I was like, ah, ha, ha, yeah. yeah, like, you know, go along with it. When it gets like four or five balloons in, they're doing it every single time. I'm like, this is getting a bit much here. Like I'm already a bit twisted, you know what I'm saying, as it is. So I'm kind of like, I don't really need this, yeah? It's getting bright outside, like it's, uh. it's, it's long, yeah? I'm kind of like, at this point, I'm now thinking like all these trips, so I ain't seeing what you're seeing, yeah, like yeah, yeah. whatever else. Like, Kind of, you know. Anyway, they kept doing it right, and then they'd done um, what was the last balloon of the night, yeah. And they looked at each other. And they were, again, they were like, "Can you see what I see?" And and at first, I, I realized they're actually not taking a piss anymore. They genuinely are seeing these trips, or they believe this in that. And they both said that there was a boat on fire, right, in a beaver. Yeah, that they said there was a boat on fire in a beaver. So. I'm just like, this is just weird, man. Like at this point, I'm getting ready to kick them out. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like both, both <laughs> yeah. of them, bro. Both of them, like <laughs> they could go. Yeah, let so, you back off. You there's go. A boat on, so they're saying there's a boat on fire. They're like, can you see that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's smoke coming. Boat on fire, right? And I kid you not, and this is the genuine, genuine, genuine truth, right? I'm sat on my balcony. It's broad daylight. Smoke starts appearing, and it started. It was a lot of smoke. And I lived right by um, Mambo's. Yeah, um, just sort of like, yeah. So like Mambo's up there to right. Yeah. So like kind of just in front of okay. my, behind Mambo's, yeah? Smoke starts appearing very, very oh. close, like something's on fire, right? And the smoke more and more and more and more. So I'm looking, I'm trying to work out where it's coming from, and it's coming from the little beach bit near Wikiwoo, but I can't see what's on fire. I go on my, um, at that time, it was like everyone's on Snapchat, yeah? So I go on my Snapchat, and obviously half of people on Snapchat from a beefer, and they're the only madheads that are posting at that time on Snapchat. Mm. There was a boat on fire, bro. Oh, like no. an abandoned boat on fire, like a ship, abandoned ship on fire, by the little beach bit next to Wikiwoo. But could the birds see it? Or no way they could have seen it. They were sat, we, and it was, was before. No, there was absolutely zero way they could have seen it. Like they were, weren't on the phone, like phone was dead. They weren't on the phone and check anything. We sat on the balcony, yeah, the three <laughs> of us, just a circle like this, right? We're not facing <laughs> Mambo's, we're facing the street, yeah? And Are they witches or something? <laughs> I was just trying to think of Johnny in that situation. Literally about four, and it wasn't for another four or five minutes or smoke, but. They were just going on about in depth about this like story about it's probably oh. in fire and beef for this ship and all Imagine this. Imagine the then, skit should get off that. Honestly, man, I, I literally it shot me through. So I was like, this is just I saw the story and I like looked at him and I was like, right, I think call him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they're like, I think like, like, what like, <laughs> like they're sat like, in the bedroom with a like, call. Oh, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just like steering the, like, I'm, steering the lips, yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I was just like, I'm tired. It's been a long, long day. Like, and, I, and, and I never spoke to her again. Like, I just, <laughs> yeah, I it just creeped me out, man. The whole thing. But there genuinely oh, was man. like a, a ship that uh, was on fire there, and I never found out what the story of that was. Everyone was talking about it the next day and stuff, and I was thinking like, yeah, I knew hear my story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh my but that was one of the weirdest things. There's been, there's been loads of like very strange things, but that's one way you just cannot explain yeah, that. Like, yeah. How, how on earth? I'd hate that. Two people doing balloons on my balcony after DC-10 and seeing a boat on fire, a ship on, like I've never known a ship on yeah. fire in a beef. And, and like, then suddenly it happened. Like, what? 
and then it's on fire. That's yeah, time. that, that skit would be horrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God knows how you must have felt. Probably why I don't do balloons on yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, yeah, I don't blame you. Um, one final one. What is the most sort of dangerous moment? Is, is there something where you've thought, shit, how have I got in this situation? How the hell am I going to get out of it? Is um, there something that sort of stands out there? Um, I'll tell you one mad one, to be fair. Actually, it was pretty recently. This was in Tulum, um, Tulum, Mexico. So... Um, so basically over there, yeah, it's, you know, it's cartel run. So obviously the cartel pretty much runs out yeah. there. Like they run the drugs, they run a lot of the bars, the restaurants, like the, the raves and stuff. Don't let that put you off going people, by the way. Yeah. It's, um, it is, <laughs> it's Bob, nice, ways. lovely. But, um, <laughs> but it is cartel run. So you have to be, have your wits about you as well. And, and the police are very corrupt there. So it's kind of like, you have to be aware that, you know, a lot of the police work with the cartel, that kind of stuff, but it's a dangerous place There's you know, there is madness going on out mm. there. Um, so we had a villa when we was there. I uh, was there for a couple of weeks and we was partying in this villa hard, do you know what I mean? Like every night we were having people back and stuff. Like music was full blast. Like we were getting complaints, like electricity cut off, all that stuff. Um, it got to, I think the third or fourth night and um, we got back and partying again and, and stuff. We had quite a few people around um, and We'd already had a complaint from kind of the security at the place. And then we had a geezer kicking off next door, some American dude going nuts as well. Um, I actually wanted the music off. It was at a point where I was just like, fuck this, man. Like, I don't want to get kicked out of this gaff. Mm. We've got another 10 days here. Um, you know, and it's just, we don't need it this mm. loud. We don't need it this wild, do you know what I'm saying? So I actually wanted it off, but boys were like, nah, I keep it on, um, you know, whatever else. So anyway, we get another knock at the door now. The everyone was upstairs and we had like a little rooftop pool it was, it was mint and they were all upstairs so they couldn't hear the, the knock on the door the only two people downstairs was me and one of my mates so um he's opened the door and he's like matt come here and i've come to the door and this is no word of a lie yeah there was a big mexican bloke stood there four police behind with oh. guns drawn like this uh, machine guns yeah like drawn like facing us and then another guy filming it like on the phone as if it's like a reporter or journalist and like I've seen my fair share, like videos of like raids and yeah. busts and people getting nicked. And it's exactly like that, do you know what I mean? They, they go to the door, they've got their phones out filming it. And they had the guns there like facing me. And just to, just to paint the picture of how I looked at this moment, <laughs> right? It was maybe 5 a.m. I had shades on, I had a stripy <laughs> shirt um, like unbuttoned, right? Like with my shirt thing out, shorts on, um, like... <laughs> Proper Brit raver, yeah, like, yeah, I kind yeah. of look right. I didn't look in any way someone that was able to like handle that kind of situation. And I come to the door and um, they went step outside. Oh. Like they look in my eyes, and I was like thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm the one that wanted the music off. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why am I dealing with this shit here? And I step outside, and I was, I'm like thinking in my head, if I step outside now, I'm getting nicked or I'm getting battered or worse. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but if I don't step outside, I was thinking there's a lot of illegal things in yeah. this gaff right now and stuff going on right now that we could get, we could basically go to jail for, do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I'm like, what the hell do we do? Um, so I said, look, I'm not stepping outside. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm not stepping outside. He goes, step outside again. He's getting close to me. Ugh. And I'm like, look, I'm sorry, I'm not stepping outside. Then I, I basically was like trying to mix in a bit of Spanish that I'd learned with, you know, with my English. And I was just like, look, I'm sorry. We're turning the music down. I'm going to leave now. I'm getting everyone out. I'll get everyone to leave all this stuff. Um, and he's, he's like looking at me and he's looking at the others and they start speaking in uh, Spanish. So I'm thinking, they're basically just designing here, like are they gonna do me in or are they gonna yeah. give me more chance before they do me in? <laughs> um, and um, he looked at me and he, he comes right up to my face and he goes, look, this is the last time I'm telling you, the last time we have these here, they're gonna be waiting downstairs. You, you, There's no more warnings now. Um, <laughs> and I've never been, yeah, like, I'm a pretty, like, tough skin guy. There's not a lot of things that intimidate me, scare me. I was shitting myself. <laughs> I, I, I was absolutely shitting myself. You cut it off. Put that speaker on. <laughs> Let's yeah. go. Bro, this is the baddest thing. Like, I, I, I ran upstairs and told the boys, yeah, I was like, you will never be what happened. And, um... I started telling them, like, oh, yeah, fuck it, like, carry on. Nah. <laughs> I was like, boys, the if you saw that, what there, I saw, yeah. yeah I'd I have like, smashed up the speaker. speaker bro, yeah. honestly, <laughs> but this is the thing. So straight away, I, I think, like, because I had my other mate there who seen it, like, 
as like if you'd seen what I just yeah. said. Because the thing is, people tell these stories and they might exaggerate it. So I like, like mm. I ain't exaggerating nothing there, bro. That is exactly how it was. Four you know? guns. It's bad enough in the UK if it happens, but you got to understand we're in the middle of a jungle in Mexico, one of the highest murder yeah. rates in the world, where like only one in twenty murders get solved. Oh, in the middle of a jungle, right, nah. with a gaff full of narcotics, yeah, like, there's so many ways that could have gone badly, do you yeah. know what I'm saying? So many ways, right? So I was like, um, I told the boys, and to be fair, they did eventually cut the music off, but I packed my bag, ready to leave. I uh, was like, I literally went and packed my bag. Mm. Um, I was like, I thought it's all going, do you know what I mean? And in the end, I didn't, because obviously the music came off. And to be fair, quite a lot of people did leave because they had actually yeah. cut the power off. Yeah. There weren't much point of staying anyway. There was no yeah. lights, no one could see anything. Fucking yeah, hell. but um, but that was a that was a real scary moment, man. Yeah. It was an eye opener that you know when you're in someone else's country, man, respect it. Yeah, you can't mess about. We have it very easy when we're in England, bro. Like you know, the the police are you know people mm. are taking it serious. They're very chill. But when you're in Mexico, bro, you don't mess about with the police, no. man. Like you don't mess about with the police, the cartel. These people are armed and dangerous. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? And um, ready to kill. Our I'd have app. I, I think I'd have cried. Yeah. Genuinely, I think I'd have gone upstairs and cried. I'd just been like, what the fuck's just happened there, boys? I couldn't imagine it? if I'd come upstairs, we'd, that, that, you'd gone, fuck off, Jay Cartwright. Yeah, it? I'd have been like, boys, I'm not, I'd, I'd have just started crying. I'd genuinely, yeah. I, I'd, where do we go from there? Oh, <laughs> no, imagine, I, like, I had to stay at that gaff for another, like, as I oh, say, yeah. for another 10 days. I bet you were all on your best behaviour, weren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah well. <laughs> you want to be Yeah, better, 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 okay, better, better behaviour. Behavior. Um, but then, obviously, it got to the last night, we're going to the festival, and the boy's like, oh, we've got to do it big tonight. It's the last yeah. night. I'm thinking, we've, it's the last night if we make it out. Yeah, right, it, yeah. Um, it could be the last night of our lives. Yeah, 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 exactly. Let alone the last night in Mexico. I mean, <laughs> mental, but I want to move on just before we sort of end a fan of you sort of questions um, what's the end goal for you what what sort of is I, I know music like you say that would be the dream um, obviously you're going to Ibiza next week then you've got the, the winter what are, you, what are your plans sort of for the next five ten years maybe yeah man um, plans really so I've always said you know I've, I want to be my own boss I'd, I'm hoping to never have to go back to a 9 to 5 ever again you know um, so launching um, my uh, coaching business in the next week or two. It's going to be called The Resilient. Um, that I don't, depends on kind of we upload this pod, but um, should hopefully all be live by then. Um, I'm really going to try to grow that. It's going to be live coaching. It's going to be fitness. If it is, we'll um, put all the links in the yeah, description as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So live coaching, fitness. Uh, they're two things that I feel like fit in really well my lifestyle, you know, because I, I, I aim to carry on living this life 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, um, but do it in a profitable way where I'm coaching other people to live this lifestyle, coaching other people to be able to be in shape, mm. um, but still be able to party and find balance in your life, really, mm. give people that motivation and, and, and mental strength. So that's the first thing, really growing my own business. Um, I basically, I'm an agent for concierge services in Ibiza, so we're looking to smash that out this summer and expand that to hopefully Dubai, Tulum, places Gosh. like that as well, um, but still early days. Um, so everything is about growth, you know, five, 10 years time, I don't think that my um, lifestyle will be that much different to now unless I, I do decide to settle down and, you know, have kids. I do want kids at some point, um, but I plan to still be out here having fun and doing all these things, but just making more money and having stuff that's sustainable there to support me. You know, it's a dream um, life and it making yeah, money whilst having fun, partying yeah, yeah. and making money, what more yeah. could you want? When yeah, Matt's exactly it, in IB for till November. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last yeah. person on the island. And we're with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just us. Yeah. Matt, you got any gaffes we can go to? <laughs> oh, I thought you were well, I'll play like <laughs> yeah, yeah. And but, one um, final thing, mate. What, what would be one piece of advice that you could give your younger self if you were to speak to 16 year old Matt, 17 year old, 18 year old that's just going to Mali for the first time, what would be the the, the piece of advice you'd give that 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 boy? Um, don't buy drugs from the lucky lucky man. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I'll give you some serious, serious <laughs> advice as well, serious advice. Um, it would be just to not worry too much what people think. Um, I'm someone that, naturally everyone's gonna worry a little bit about what people think. I still care a little bit now, but, that's holding me back with my music and certain things so much because I'm always thinking, oh, you know, one negative comment or one negative opinion out of a hundred would be the one I focus on and not mm. the hundred positive things. So my younger self and to the younger generation, I say, don't worry about what other people think. If there's something that you want to do, go and do it, man. Like go mm. and chase it. It doesn't matter if someone 
doesn't think it's going to work or someone has an issue with you doing it as long as it's something that you know it's not a bad thing that it's legal or whatever else you know like go and do it man and, and don't worry what other people think because i guarantee they'll quickly be changing their mind when you do well mm. you when know, you're successful they'll want to know you're you making yeah. money do you know what i mean they'll they'll quickly be like oh like yeah like you want to be the person that they're like oh i actually went to school yeah. with with matt i went to school with jack I went yeah, to, exactly and then, then that's, exactly. what's that saying first they will laugh then they will follow yeah yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so true. Exactly. Actually, I'm gonna tell you when I use that. I wore a Here pair of Birkenstocks on holiday, <laughs> oh, yeah. and my mates gave me shit for wearing them. The next day, he asked if he could borrow them. So, Jack, <laughs> if you're listening, that is so true. And um, yeah, <laughs> you want to? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt, perfect. Mate. Thank you so much for coming on, oh, mate. Well, this has been well, class. Really um, cheers, I've loved speaking about. We love yeah, speaking so about good. anything to do with partying. It's it's so much fun, as as you well know. Um, I will put all your links in the description. Obviously, like I say, if you're coaching, is out by the time we release this it'll be in the description as well your socials um uh, yeah i've loved it every yeah. second of it it's brilliant Unreal. guys if you've uh, if you've enjoyed it then make sure to subscribe make sure to follow the podcast spotify apple, apple podcasts and on youtube as well and uh, yeah we'll see you all next time vamos vamos sweet boom fucking class. Class, quality fella really good, mate. thank really you so much for coming on pal